Hey everybody, this is Rick. I'm senior pastor of Allen Creek Community Church and welcome to another edition of Pastor Have You Seen This? And this is our chance where one of the pastors on our staff at our church get to comment on something that's making the rounds, you know, something that's interesting that has to do with Christianity, God, the Bible, whatever. And um, sometimes people just have asked us a lot, like said, Pastor, I would love to hear your take on this. And so that's our chance to do this, and uh, this is our chance to do this, and and I have not seen this. So just to you know, give myself some permission to stumble through some of these things, uh, this is a cold read where I'm going to have on this is something that our staff um, of our video team has just selected for me to comment on. If you've got something that you'd like us to comment on, send it to social at ac3.org right here, and we would be happy to comment on it, and uh, we'll have some fun. So without further ado, let's see what this one's about. Neil deGrasse Tyson. This should be interesting. As a scientist, do you believe in God? Productive scientists do not bring their Bible, their scripture, their holy books into the lab because they do not mix there. So they draw a line in the sand Mm -hmm. and they do one in one place. Then they worship on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, whatever your religious tradition there. So to ask whether they can coexist, the answer is, is empirically Yes, every description of God that I've heard holds God to be all powerful, very typical, and all good. And then I look around and I see a tsunami that killed a quarter million people in Indonesia, an earthquake that killed a quarter million people in Haiti. And I see earthquakes and tornadoes and disease, childhood leukemia. And I see all of this and I say, I do not see evidence of both of those being true simultaneously. If there is a God, The God is either not all powerful or not all good. As a scientist, do you believe in God? Um, Productive scientists do not bring their Bibles. This is fascinating for me specifically because I have just finished the, the raw manuscript for a book called Two Falls, How to Reconcile a Benevolent God with a Brutal Earth. And so I have got way way too much to say on this. So how will I summarize this? Um, First of all, the comment about bringing your Bible, I think uh, Tyson kind of has it in some sense, where scientists are simply um, involved in the process of understanding how nature works. And so that is a process that is not inherently religious or spiritual. It's about understanding physical causes and effects. I will, however, say that nobody comes to their science without philosophical bias. In fact, and this is really interesting, science itself is built on philosophical presumptions. And if you were had only purely atheistic presumptions, it is entirely likely that science would never get off the ground in such a world. You say, well, why would that be? Well, if you were an atheist and you had... Uh, no, uh, you 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 believe disbelieved in gods of any kind. That there was nothing behind nature except um, just just randomness, can uh, chance, um, chaos. What confidence would you have that nature could be uh, first of all coordinated, orderly, law like, mind like? You wouldn't have any confidence. I mean, what confidence could you have? You could maybe guess that it might have that. If you discovered that it did have that, you'd say, hey, this is great. Uh, Nature is regular and rhythmic and orderly, and it functions according to laws and prediction, and it's predictable. Um, You'd be thrilled about that. But would you have come into nature with such a presumption on the basis of atheism? It's almost certain that you would not. And a lot of people are now saying, including like Stephen Meyer in Return of the God Hypothesis, that um, that the reason why science got launched in the first place, and I'm not talking about the discipline of science. I'm not talking about a particular discovery about the natural world in this culture or this culture or this era or this era. I'm talking about the discipline of science as we understand it today. Arose only once in human history. It can never arise again afresh, anew, because we've got it now, uh, in the Christian West. And all of its first practitioners were Christian men of deep Christian commitment. Now, is that just fluke? Is that just luck? Or did their conception of God and the created order have something to do with the arrival of science as a discipline? And I think the answer is absolutely it did. Because the Christian conception of the image of God is that there is a God behind nature, and therefore nature must in some sense be mind-like. And therefore 
The further assumption the scientists made was that we, made in the image of that God, could then understand it. Because that's a further implication that is not necessarily a natural outgrowth of atheism. Like, hey, na nature is orderly, but you're just the result of random chaotic matter and the collision of atoms. There's no order or purpose to that. So, and, and, and your survival is purely a matter of utility. It's not a matter of truth seeking. So there's no confidence that you could have that your senses are gathering true information about the world on atheism. So even if it was ordered, what confidence could you have that you could understand its order? So on the Christian worldview, you have two things going on. You've got the, 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 the presence of uh, the, the idea of an orderly God who makes an orderly creation. And then this, we are made in the image of that God, and therefore we can understand it. And even non-Christian um, scientists understood the, what do I want to say, the seismic um, implication of those two ideas. Einstein uh, constantly then referred to after basically he discovered that the universe had a beginning. Um, along with several others, Hubble and so forth, the evidence that the that the universe was not past eternal suddenly just it just dawned on him that there was something more to the universe than matter, and Einstein looked then at the universe and how it, its forces and its laws could be like nailed down into precise mathematical equations, and he realized that it was comprehensible, and he considered its comprehensibility to be incomprehensible. That's what he said. The incomprehensibility of the comprehensibility of the universe. What does he mean by that? He means that just the fact that it is utterly stark and incredible that we should be able to comprehend the universe. And on atheism, it is utterly incomprehensible. Uh, but on theism, we have a reason why it is A, ordered, and B, that we could understand its order and draw conclusions from it to do science. So I think uh, 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 the eminent scientist here, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, skips that whole part um, as if uh, – I think he's trying to be very judicious here. Oh, yeah, Christians can do good science. They just have to not be Christians while they do it. Well, that is just utterly proof false by the fact that the first practitioners of science were Christian people of deep Christian faith and commitment. You can, you, you can be a fully vested Christian. In fact, someone might argue that you need to have some of those presumptions in place to do – or to let's say to launch science. Not to do science. Atheists do good science, but to launch it in the first place. His further claim, I just can't get into. Dang it. And that's what my book is all about. Um, so maybe on another episode of Pastor Every Scene, we talk about, well, then how do we reconcile the idea that the ordered creation could never could be the result of a good God despite its glaringly bad features? We'll talk about that in another episode of Pastor Have You Seen This.